Now, Open Builds doesn't sponsor me or have anything to do with this video. I'm just making it on my own and I'm using some of their hardware because I think it's awesome. Hey, my name is Jeremiah Hale. Thanks for joining me. Now this will be my first project and um, the video will be kind of lapsed so you'll have to forgive me. I am merely shooting this all on a phone so do my best. And this is my build of a 3D printer in a 1500 by 1500 millimeter print bed. Uh, the z-axis is not that impressive it's only like 180 millimeters but still uh, we can make something pretty nice with that. The idea is to I use extruded aluminum, uh, much like some of the other 3D printers you may have worked with or seen, but this extruded aluminum is quite beefy and should be able to handle the printing no problem. Now the what you're looking at now is the actuator and we will go ahead and assemble one. And this lead screw is too fat to fit under the gantry. This is the normal size gantry in runner um, that Open Builds store sells. And this is my first go to. And this fits their Acme um, 8mm rod. Now that will act as a lead screw. You attach the lead screw underneath the plate here. And it goes back and forth just fine. But I couldn't get Acme 8mm in. 150 millimeters so we went to upgrade so this plate will have to be upgraded as well and that's where this comes in this is the extra large grant gantry plate for their c-beam extruded aluminum and let's put it together all right what's in this kit it's a bunch of ziploc bags Five, millim five millimeter, um, eight, and fives, and then Allen keys. So let me grab the tools. All right, the screws here are um, a three millimeter Allen key. And it comes with a few of these nylon uh, nuts. Wow, my hands are really dirty. <laughs> um, a few of these nylon nuts that are eight millimeters. So I just grabbed an eight millimeter socket. That should work just fine. And specialty tools um, if I need them. And I believe some of the kits that I've gotten in the past came with these little Allen keys. I didn't see one in this bag. Maybe I've removed it already. I don't know. Um, so you may get one of these if you order it from Open Builds, but uh, go ahead and do yourself a favor and upgrade. And that's me assuming you're going to go my route. The idea behind making this video is more of a, um, not really a tutorial on how to do it. And this is, this is just how I did it. 
These are off the shelf components for building these actuators. And so I may halfway through this build decide, hey, this is not the way to go and go a different direction. So uh, take this video as informational, all right? Uh, this gantry plate, um, the extra large one comes in two flavors. Yes, I said flavors. A, um, a six wheel configuration, one on the side of the plate, one, two, and three, um, or a four wheel. Um, I highly suggest if you're gonna go ponying pony up for this gantry plate size, anyway, you might as well get the extra stability with the extra couple wheels. So that's what these baggies are. The bearings and the, I believe, uh, nylon, I'm not sure what, I forgot what it is. Uh, kind of like skateboard wheels. To adjust the grip on the C-beam itself for the extruded aluminum, uh, we have these off-center um, nuts that you can use and just change their um, rotation a bit and that squeezes or loosens uh, the wheels on their track. So nice ingenious little nifty system. All right, let's get her unpacked out of her plate. And this is one-handed and the top of this Ziploc bag is really tiny. Hold on, put the camera down. All right, and we're back. And even off camera, that took me a while to get that open in two hands. Sorry about the extra noise there. Okay, so here's the plate and we will attach the wheels to it. And I found this is a good way to do it, is to just put the screws in and then uh, throw everything on there and then tighten it up in a different orientation. All right, for the side that doesn't have the eccentric bushings, uh, you just have the regular offset bushings and those go on first so it matches the other side. And these come in the kit. All right, now we'll put in the eccentric, 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 whatever, however you say these things, the bushings. So it fits in and then it slides down into the hole underneath it. And so that little lip there is what's doing all the heavy lifting for the most part. So put that in there and like so. So now it matches and we'll get the wheels on. Getting these all out. And the light's moving across from the windows right across my work. <laughs> okay, order is very important here. We're gonna need a washer, then we're gonna need a bearing, and then the nylon wheel, uh, wheel goes over the bearing. Then you need another bearing, I mean another washer, followed by the other um, bearing. And that, that way there's a sandwich pressure that's created when you tighten these bolts down, and that pressure is being taken by this washer and not being transferred to the bearings or to the wheels. So it's the order of operation here is very important. So washer, bearing, nylon, or whatever plastic this is. Give it some, give it some love there. Throw down another washer, then the other bearing, and then finally the nylon nuts. Lock nuts. Just so it's on there. The screw's spinning on the bottom down there. Doesn't want to go. There we go. Got it. That took embarrassingly too long, but there you go. And then rinse and repeat all four of them. Or all the rinse and repeat the remainder. All right, those three are tight. Um, make sure that these are still easily freely spinning. They shouldn't like spin spin, but they should, you know, easily spin. If not, you probably got the 
Um, you miss the inner washer in there that's going to be the separator and that will really hamper these things for ability to rotate. So make sure your order of operation is correct if you're going to follow along on this. Uh, I've already assembled one of these already, cheater, uh, but I missed one of these where I had the washer in there and these do not spin so well if the, if the order of operation is in error and you don't have the washer on the bottom, washer in the middle, and then nothing on the top. Okay, these are tight. Now I can just get in there and spin those to align everything all right. I'm gonna start off everything at about, I'm gonna start them all pointing, well, at about seven o'clock here. There you go, like that. All right, now we're ready to slide around the track. Pardon the glare here. There we go. Slides pretty well, a little too well actually. Um, do the, my little test is to kind of see if these, if I can freely spin these without the carriage moving, then it's too loose. So this one's touching, looking good. This one's too loose. And that one's pretty good, pretty tight. So I need to readjust this one. So I'll come in here real quick and just give her a little, give it a little touch and there you go. So that one's tight, that one's tight, and that one's tight. It should feel snug, but not, not super, super tight. So shouldn't roll away on you. So just, just sit on there and be nice and so there shouldn't be any chatter moving the, the plate around. So it looks like we're good. Part of the background noise, I think the entire neighborhood's got the bar dogs barking. Slide her off and tighten them down. All right, locked in. Let's see how well it did. One million Ziploc bags later. So here are the two plates side by side for a side comparison. And having the wheels on the outside leaves a nice uh, trough here to get the ball screw underneath it. It's nice, about a three three quarters of an inch, somewhere around there, uh, thickness ball screw. So. Okay. Got my clearance underneath, but the next problem is the lead screw won't fit. So it's got a um, it's got a nut on here that has the rotating bearings inside of it, and uh, one side or the other has got to come off so it can get the clearance all the way down in the track. That's the next problem, and as you can see, so about there, starts to hit the track, and so I need my extra millimeter back, please.